Last night, this little baby copper moran had a really hard time hatching. She had been stuck in her shell for three days with one tiny little opening so she could breathe, but I knew that without our assistance, she was going to perish. So with nothing to lose, we decided to intervene and help her hatch. Let's talk about the process. We took a video of the whole thing, and I wanna talk a little bit about the process of a chick emerging from the shell. But a day before they begin to hatch, they're gonna puncture an air cell that has been growing right here at the fat end of the egg. What's interesting is that they have been getting oxygen this entire time in the shell. And what we don't realize, because we can't see the microscopic holes with our eyes, is that there are tiny, tiny pores inside the egg that are big enough to allow oxygen to go in and for carbon monoxide to go out. And so they have been breathing this whole time. Now humans, we take our first breath after we have exited the womb, but baby chicks can get their oxygen this whole time through the pores of the shell and then the day before they're born, they break up in that air sac and take their first real breath with their lungs that are now fully developed. After they do that, they have a little bit of energy to begin breaking through the shell. Isn't it fascinating that this egg is so strong that it's very difficult for us to crush an egg with our hands, but it is also delicate enough that a little baby bird with just a tiny beak can break their way through. It's been happening this whole time is that the baby chick has been absorbing calcium from the shell into their bones. So the whole 21 days of incubation, the shell has been getting thinner and thinner. By the time day 21 rolls around, the shell is thin enough for them to be able to break through with something very special that they grew on the tip of their beak. What they've been growing on the tip of their beak that they will only need once is an egg tooth. It's a little bit of hard calcium that helps them to poke through the shell. Now, they make their first initial cut, they're gonna present face side up and they're gonna make their first little hole right here on the top of the shell. Then they're going to turn inside the shell and continue breaking it in multiple places. That way, the top of the egg can just pop off. What's really cool is that they have a muscle on the back of their neck that gets a little bit swollen at this time and it enables them to both turn inside their shell to break it evenly all the way midway through the shell, um, but also to be able to hit hard enough to break through that shell. The little girl that hatched last night had a really hard time turning in her shell. I'm not really sure why, but I do think it had to do with that neck muscle that was not very strong. So what I decided to do was to go in and assist her in hatching. Most of the time, animals are fully equipped to do everything that they need to do without our assistance. And usually when we intervene, we can make things worse. And so try not to have a savior complex when it comes to assisting animals, because we usually do more harm than good. And now that I've told you not to help a chick hatch, I'm gonna tell you how to help a chick hatch. Sometimes they do need our help, but if you're going to help, proceed very, very carefully because not only do they need to deal with this hard outer shell, they have two membranes inside and one of them is very, very tricky because it's actually attached to the chick's body. As they are hatching, those um, membranes have tiny network of veining all over them. And if that membrane has not pulled away from the chick and um, dried up a little bit, then you are gonna cause the chick to bleed to death because you've pulled the membrane off and therefore ripping tons of tiny little veins. So when I went in with my um, nail file, what I did first was to chip off the outer side so that she would have an easier time opening up the membrane herself. So first I began to pluck away at the tiny um, shell and I put her back inside the incubator. And here's what's really important. If you pull a chick out of the incubator into a very, very hot and dry room, that membrane is going to dry up and shrivel up and it's gonna contract. And that is called the shrink wrap effect. So what I did was increase the humidity in that room. I did that by turning on my shower with hot water and I turned on both of the sinks that are in that room so I could fill the room with as much humidity as possible. I 
also made sure that my hand was a little bit wet. So while the room was nice and humid, I began to gently peel away the outer shell without trying to touch the membrane that was still intact around the chick's body. And I put it back inside the incubator to see how much she could do on her own. And still, she, after an hour or two, she made very little progress. So I knew that it was time for me to go in where she had already made a tiny cut in the membrane with her little egg tooth to see what would happen if I began to peel it away. The first little layer of membrane came off very easily, and then I could see the goopy, it's almost clear membrane, um, had no more network of veining on it. And so what I thought was, okay, I think it's safe to take this off of her body, and I won't be pulling at her skin and causing her to bleed. So then I just gently proceeded, but the really, really important part when I got to this fat part around here, this was attached to her belly button. So this whole time, the chick is sitting in the shell absorbing that yolk that's where they get all their energy all their nutrients from and they have an umbilical cord just like we do in their belly button where all that nutrients is um, attached so whereas baby humans are attached to a placenta inside their mommy's tummy they are attached to the yolk inside the egg. And so I knew that it would take some time for the umbilical cord to dry up. If you've ever seen a newborn baby animal, sometimes you get to see their belly button is still attached to the umbilical cord and it takes some time for it to dry up, to shrivel up, and then to fall off all by itself. It is very, very important for this chick to absorb all that yolk and to let the umbilical cord dry up slowly on its own over time. So after she was out of the shell, she still remained attached to to that part of the yolk that was attached to her belly button. So I popped her back inside the incubator and this part took hours. It was so hard to be patient because I knew that if it didn't dry up on its own and if I pulled it, then I would risk exposing her intestines, exposing her to bacteria or causing her to bleed to death because all those veins are still um, running into the shell where it was attached right here to the yolk. So that part was the hardest part to wait what it actually took overnight for it to dry up completely. This morning when I went to check on her, her little umbilical cord had fallen off, her belly button had closed, and there's no chance that bacteria can now enter into that very sensitive part and cause her to get very, very sick. Normally we don't ever help a chick hatch, but this one has been laboring for a really long time and also hatching about four, four days after the 21 day. The fact that this chick is alive and trying, can you see it moving, is just incredible. And so what we're trying to do is keep the membrane intact. Uh, if you have to help, helping with the shell part and not that membrane is the safest, safest thing. This is a last ditch effort. I will never go in and help a chick um, unless I know for sure that they're gonna die. So we're at that stage now with this little, this little guy. And I'd rather help and risk it uh, because we at this point have nothing to lose. The hard part about this is that I hear you in there, little one. The hard part about this is, is, is that taking them out of the incubator uh, it's kind of tricky because we're losing heat um, and we're losing humidity. So what we've done prior to bringing this baby out of the incubator was turn on every sink, turn on the shower, we're in my bathroom, you can probably hear the echo, uh, in order to raise the humidity. Um, the ideal humidity is 70% right now. And I think this little guy's about to hatch in my hand. That would be so cool. I'm glad that he still has some energy in here. The problem is, is that I'm losing structure to hold on to, like as leverage. So I'm gonna focus on this. The air pocket is down here. Sorry. Do you guys keep going? Uh, I don't. I don't know really how else to do this. <laughs> I really don't want this membrane to harden. And so I'm using a moistened pan to just keep it.
They are still in the incubator because I don't remove the baby chicks until they are completely dry um, and fluffy. Their little navel, their umbilical cord that was attached to the shell needs to dry off. If you don't let it dry completely in the incubator, then what happens is uh, you can get something called a black button and it dries up their little navel area, dries up really, really black. Um, before it closes, so it's supposed to close in the incubator, and if you allow it to close outside the incubator, then you've opened up the world of bacteria um, to go in and infect them in that area. And we definitely don't. It looks like apocalyptic in here. I've never had this much blood in my incubator before. I don't know which chick it came from. I've already examined both of the chicks in here and they look fine, but they're, I mean, look at the blood that is like dried all over the incubator. It's not, I mean, that was, it seems like it was a pretty traumatic hatching. This one's kind of bloody too, though. But look, you can tell they had a nice hatching when the membrane is still nice and supple. The humidity is the perfect temperature, uh, the perfect, the humidity in the incubator was perfect when they can easily detach from this membrane and it isn't stuck all over their body when they're hatched. Cool, huh? But sometimes what happens is the humidity goes way down and the membrane will harden and dry. It contracts around them as it loses moisture. So humidity uh, in the incubator is super important because of this membrane. Look, look. Is it coming? Come on, baby. We're trying to help this little chicky hatch. Is it moving anymore? Mm -hmm. Should I help with the membrane? Because I can see it. I can see it shrinking. Is that a little beak? It is. Hi. It's blurry. Yeah. Hi, baby. Come on out. We are anxious to meet you. All right. We are going in. Hi. You are so cute. I really need you to make it though, okay? This is so hard because you really don't want to have any interrupted blood vessels and I can't tell if... Hi, am I hurting you, baby? It's so blurry. Your hands are clear. See, this right here is what I'm worried about. Uh, with the blood? Do you see this little white? Mm -hmm. See the blood vessels right here? Hey, baby. Okay, I'm making this so easy for you. I just need you to survive, okay? Yeah, I see you. You're a cutie pie. Fresh. I know. Do you have a little bit of energy? That would be amazing. Let me see you wiggle wiggle. Come on, baby. I'm gonna 
gonna keep some water running to get the humidity up in this room. I wish I had a humidifier, you know? Ooh. Hey, that that worked. I hope so. I mean, that looks good. Okay, I'm starting to feel hopeful. I hope I'm not feeling. Optimistic for the wrong reasons. Oh, I see blood. Keep pulling that membrane part off. Not that, the goopy part. Yeah, that part. Oh my gosh, if this works. Hi baby, please stay alive. Can you do that for me? Please stay alive. Don't rush it. Oh my goodness. Hi, darling. Okay, I know you're feeling weak. Did you absorb your yolk? Not yet. So I'm gonna, do you see the belly button and the umbilical cord? Yep. He needs to stay attached to that. Okay. In here. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me help. Let me help. I gotta do this. Okay, so the goal right now is that she would stay in there and continue to absorb her yolk. The umbilical cord is still attached to the membrane of the shell. Really, really humid in here. It's also calm. We took the other two babies out. Let me go put them in the brooder. I'll be right back. Okay, there's the baby. We are waiting on that little bit to dry up and separate. It's been about 45 minutes since we took her out of the shell by hand. So this is love. Mm. Another little update. There is a tiny feather sticking out of the top of its head. <laughs> I love it so much. She is so active, moving around. And this is drying up beautifully. I love the old man eyebrows. <laughs> You are something special. I have a feeling you're gonna make it, baby. The incubator got incredibly humid all of a sudden and she was gasping. So hold her out just for a second to let her get a clear breath. I think she's doing good now. I'm gonna pop her back in. I let it vent for a second. Oh, bless my soul. Oh, she's trying to crawl in my hand. You are so strong. Oh, I'm so proud of you. It was miraculous to watch this little baby hatch right in my hand and to help her through all the stages. It was very hard to be patient, but I'm glad that I was because it really paid off. She's energetic, walking around. Everything is fully formed. Her legs are perfect. Her wings are perfect. She's eating and drinking just like she should. And so it was worth it um, to put in all the hours to watch her and to help her and to be patient with her. I think that watching chicks hatch and the reason it is a little bit addicting to get into raising chickens is because the miracle of watching them hatch or watching any animal be born really just 
um, brings us closer to our creator. The miracle of life is just, it's in all of us. And so that is all for today's video. I hope that you never have to help, but if you do have to help, I hope that there was some information in here that was helpful to you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.